a universal language that pulsates across borders and all around the world we live in. It's crucially underpinned by rhythm, and rhythm has power. It can change your mood, it can make you move, and one of the few fundamental things we know about our universe is that everything within it vibrates to its own unique rhythm. And unsurprisingly, we are all built with our very own rhythm machine from day one. And after all, the universe itself started with one very big bang. The rhythmic manipulation of noise, otherwise known as drumming, is as old as our world itself. Drumming has played a hugely important part in the evolution of our societies, from keeping time and setting the tempo, to marking ceremonial occasions, celebrations, dance, and even war. I'm Ruri Glasheen, I play percussion and rhythm has been a ruling character in my life. I first picked up the Irish Baron at the ripe old age of four and embarked on my own adventure into the world of music. Every culture on the face of our planet has its own musical tradition along with its own drum, which in my opinion is the most incredible lens through which to experience and understand different cultures. Simply hearing the music on CD or online isn't enough for me. I want to see the instruments, meet the players, understand their lives and connect, collaborate and create. Because that's what music is all about, right? Furthermore, I want to travel off the beaten track to document and share the real stories behind these musicians who are drumming new life into ancient traditions. The Islamic Republic of Iran is the perfect place to start my adventure with one of the oldest music traditions on the face of our earth that's often overlooked in its complex social and political history. Now, I want to try and change that. I'm traveling to Iran to learn about its music and in particular, its national drum, the tombak. Tombak is a virtuoso and versatile instrument and a hugely important part of indigenous Persian music, the roots of which are thousands of years old. The story of the Tombak tracks Iran's social, political and cultural history. In its earliest form, the drum was used to accompany Zorkena, a traditional practice of fitness training that dates back to Iran's pre-Islamic era and is still widely practiced today. The drum took on a more refined shape and sound during the Qajar dynasty, where Iran's classical music tradition, as we know it today, was established. In 1925, Reza Shah overthrew the Qajar dynasty and brought about a radical program of modernization, including the introduction Western musical influences. Classical symphony orchestras and big bands were showcased alongside their traditional counterparts. But in 1979, religious leader Ayatollah Khomeini set about transforming Iran into a theocratic Islamic state. The Tombak's fortunes took a tumble. These days, we rarely have the chance to see or hear the tombak outside Iran. And I want to meet the young players who are drumming new life into this ancient tradition. Moreover, I want to discover this enigmatic country for myself. This is the Hidden Drummers of Iran. Our journey starts in Tehran, Iran's capital city 
and a frenetic hive of contrasts. Ancient monuments stand comfortably alongside the contemporary concrete of new Soviet-inspired structures. And it's all bound together by multiple lane expressways. The city is dappled with memories of its complex political past but I had a different experience to what these images might suggest. Tehran is warm and welcoming and filled with fascinating people to meet and places to see. City's population of 14 million are surrounded by the snow-capped Alboros Mountains and carefully watched over by the imposing Azadi Tower. The tower was built in 1971 to commemorate 2,500 years of the imperial state of Iran. It was renamed after the 1979 revolution to Azadi Tower, or Freedom Tower, to reflect the transition from monarchy to republic. At the heart of Tehran lies its Grand Bazaar, over 10 kilometres of labyrinth-like winding lanes lined with just about every kind of shop you could imagine. Though I hadn't come to Iran for sightseeing, I had first connected with Majid Rezidust over Instagram several months before arriving in Tehran. So it was great to finally meet and share our musical backgrounds. As far as I know, there are no tombak makers outside of Iran, so I was looking forward to seeing how these instruments are actually made during my trip. I visited Kevian Teheri, who specialises in making bespoke tombaks for some of the finest players around. I was lucky to see him at work and ask him about the process of making these instruments. <laughs> درخت بریده میشه و چوبش وارد کارگاه ما میشه حدود سه سال طول میکشه The tombak itself is made of a solid tree trunk Elm, ash and mulberry are used though walnut is the most popular with players The tombak drums are carved into goblet shapes and left dry they are wrapped in thick plastic to moderate the temperature as sudden changes can result in the wood cracking. It's a temperamental process that requires dedication and patience. At any point during the three year period, the wood can split and become useless. بعد از گذشت نزدیک سه سال تقریبا یک ماه پیش به همین شیوهی که این تنبک رو بستم اینم امروز 
اون مرحله تراش داخلش که میخوره کار تموم میشه در واقع و بعد مرحله رنگ اون کمک رو رنگ میکنیم و بعد از رنگ کاری پوست مناسبی رو اساس انتخاب میکنیم و روش میکشیم و اون موقع تنبک ما تموم میشه Majid introduced me to Reza Korcharedi, another well-known maker from Tehran, who showed me the different types of skin used to finish off the tombak once the woodwork is complete. پوستا هم که پوستای شطور هست و پوستای گوساله حالا نمونه پوستش هم اگر خواستی من میارم که ببینیم پوستو چطور میکشیم و کاراشو بهشون نشون میدم اگه خواستن که ببینم پوست که اول چطور هست و تو آب میره چطور میشه اونو میتونم الان بیارم براتون نشون بدم که اصلا پوستا تو آب میره چطوری شل میکنه و اینا بهتون نشون میدم کلوفتره زخامتش بیشتر Once the skin has been soaked it's glued and tacked to the wooden shell of the tombak frame and achieving the optimum tension is crucial to producing the best sound quality from the drum. Thicker skins will generally produce a deeper tone, and thinner skins will give the drum a higher pitch. Tombak ریتمو داره. به خاطر این شما هر ساز دیگه ای که بزنید، علاوه بر ملودی ریتم هم توش داره. بنابراین این ساز چون یه سازیه که برای ما به صورت حرفه‌ای و از اون طرف به صورت سنتی ریتم کارهای ما رو حفظ میکنه تو همه گروه ها باید باشه ریتم جهانیه ولی ملودی منطقهیه و از همشون بیشتر معروف شد هلو Hey, good to see you. <laughs> good to see you too. So the plan is to come to Iran and it will be really great to meet up. I wanted uh, to say you that, that uh, when you come, uh, for sure I can uh, help you if I can. Uh, I'm trying to do my best. I first got chatting to Mehran Furtan, a tombak player from Tehran on Instagram, more than a year before my trip to Iran. Whilst the Iranian government may closely monitor social media sites, including a ban on Facebook and Twitter, Instagram is permitted and incredibly popular. Nowadays, things are getting better. Uh, internet speed <laughs> and something like that, that we can uh, communicate uh, easier and easier. Recently, Iranian musicians uh, are very active in social medias. Uh, so uh, the world is uh, getting to know them and uh, communicating with them in culture, in music, in science, and in everything. It seems to me that society in Iran today is torn between the centuries-old Islamic traditions and the inevitability of globalization through the internet and social media. Despite still facing obstacles, things seem to be getting better for the current generation of musicians. As I see now, people go to the foreign countries easier uh, than it used to be. Social medias uh, are getting more popular in Iran. They were popular, but in other things. In the last 50 years, uh, Tombak uh, has uh, very improved by players like Navid Afgah, Pejman Haddadi, and uh, so many other great musicians that have their own styles. I want to travel to the other countries and share uh, my uh, culture, my music culture especially, uh, with other musicians as um, something like you, you are doing right now. I think uh, it's one of my uh, great wishes.
<laughs> Navid Afka is a leading tombak player and a huge inspiration to the younger generation, not least for the fact that he's one of the few who tours internationally. I chatted to him about the past, the present and the future of the tradition. موسیقی ایران با یک مشکل همیشگی مواجه هست و اون از این هم هست که یک, یک آرزی تاریخی همیشه برگردنش هست یه مسئله تاریخی داره یه مسئله به صلاح یه مشکل تاریخی همیشه داره مسئله تحصیل مسئله زمان مسئله به صلاح مهار زمان در واقع مسئله مهار سواد و همه اینها یک پکی رو به وجود آورده که ما از یک برهه تاریخی گذشتیم از یک بابتی خوب رشد پیدا کردیم It seems strange to an outsider that music might seem subversive or dangerous though after the people's revolution in 1979 where Iran was transformed into a theocratic Islamic state music was heavily restricted and in many cases banned altogether expression is still tightly controlled and it seems that players are riding a fine line between breaking the rules and pushing their musical boundaries. گذشته اجتماعی بگیرید تا گذشته محتوایی بگیرید همه اینها رو خب بالاخره نوازنده‌ای که در این دوره برای به سر بره بعد حتما نگاه به گذشته داشته باشه پیشینه خودش خوب بشناسه تاریخ به اصطلاح کاری رو که می‌کنه بشناسه من همیشه این جمله رو میگم همیشه در آموزش من میگم شما میتونید ریاضی بخونید ولی تاریخ ریاضی ندونید شما میتونید بیولوژی بخونید میتونید تاریخ بیولوژی ندونید ولی شما نمیتونید هنر بخونید تاریخ هنر ندونید شما نمیتونید فلسفه بخونید تاریخ فلسفه ندونید حتما باید اینها رو بدونید اینکه اگر حرفی باشه در مورد هنر جویان تنبک همیشه معتقدم که باید گذشتگان خودشون خوب بدونن که جای خودشون تو تاریخ درست بفهمن که چی میتونه باشه I've been told that the historic city of Esfahan is the birthplace of Persian music, so I took a five-hour bus journey from Tehran to see it for myself and meet Javad Ali Rezai, one of Iran's finest young tombak players. What is this song? The song is from about 2000 years ago, the story of Sasania. In Iran, it's about 100 years ago. بیشتر شناخته شده، بیشتر روش کار شده. حدود 20 30 سالی هم هست که این حدود آره 30 سال هست که این ساز یک ارتقاء خیلی این یک سطح خیلی بالایی رو تجربه کرده. از نوازندگی که میشه گفت در مقابل با سازهای دیگه کوبه ای مثل درامز و تبلا این ساز چیزی the drum got its name from the two main sounds it produces, ton and back. Ton is produced by striking the whole hand in the center of the drum, whilst the back sound is made by striking the third finger on the edge of the drum by the shell. It goes without saying that players like Javad are producing a whole new world of sounds and virtuals of techniques. Javad comes from a musical family. His brother Ethan is also a fine musician playing the ney, a long hollow flute made from a single piece of cane and thought to be one of the world's oldest instruments. It has six holes, each pitched a semitone apart, and players produce microtones through changing the embouchure or mouth position. <laughs> و خب به عشق عجیبی هم میخواد توی موسیقی و ما هم یک ذره از این عشق رو داشتیم و خدا رو شکر استادی که داشتیم ما را در راه درست موسیقی در راه درست نوازندگی در این جریان انداخت و هرچی داشت یعنی هرچی 
در حقیقت در دست داشت گذاشت وسط و ما به همون آموزش داد به همون یاد داد یک نوازنده ای اگه اونجوری که ما دلمون میخواد همه یه اون شرایطی که دوست داریم داشته باشه استعداد خوب انگیزه خوب برای تمرین همه چیز مهیا باشه حدوده یه و تمرین خیلی زیاد داشته باشه تمرینی که بیش از چهار ساعت پنج ساعت در روز بکنه توی چهار پنج سال نتیجه خوب میگیره از تنبک نوازی ولی این نتیجه خوب این نیست که بگیم دیگه تموم شده تون بکت نوازی نه تازه شروع شده از اینجا فضای کنسرت توی ایران حالا اونقدر فضای بازی نیست یعنی اونقدر کنسرت داده نمیشه و مردم اونقدر دیگه به صورت جدی پیگیره موسیقی, ایر... موسیقی, مون موسیقی ایران نیستن خب بیشتر این جذابیت برای نوازنده ها و کلا کس از برقه اقوام مختلف و فرنگایی مختلف دنیا هست تا بیشتر تا ایران ولی من نمیدونم باید از کجا شروع کنم و کجا کنسرت بدم و چیکار کنم خب من توی اینستاگرام فیلم هایی که میگذاشتم از خودم یه برحال این سبک جدید تومبک نوازی که در مورد صحبت میکنیم هنوز در ایران با اینکه سی سال ازش میگذره خیلی ها نشنیدنش خب حالا از زمانی که فضای مجازی اومده و اینستاگرام و تلگرام اینها بیشتر دیده شده این سبک ولی خب خیلی رو میدیدن و جذب این نوع از تومبک نوازی میشدن که من کلاسیک میتونم اجرا کنم اما تومبک نوازی مدرن و در حقیقت پیشرفته تر و به روستری رو میتونم ارائه کنم جذب ساز من میشدن و به من پیغام میدادن شخصی که شما کجا درس میدین ما میخوایم بیایم پیشتون یا در مورد ساز از هم سآل میکردن و میخواستن ببینن که این چه سبکی از سنبک نوازیه ما اونجا بیشتر این که من آره بتونم این ساز رو به کل دنیا معرفی کنم و فرهنگ های دیگه ببینن که این ساز با ساختمان ساده چقدر پیچیدگی ها و تنوع های زیادی داره و فرهنگ تومبک نوازی ایران رو ببینن بتونم به کل دنیا معرفش کنم Thank you. 
تکا کل به سر آی آی این خبر از من ببر آی آی کفتر تکا کل به سر آی آی That evening, we headed out to one of Esfahan's most iconic landmarks, the Seo Sepol Bridge. At 300 metres long and just over 400 years old, the bridge was named after its 33 arches, Seo Sepol being a direct translation. Whilst Iran's largest river, the Zayanderhud, once ran beneath the bridge and through the centre of the city, Climate change, droughts and wasteful irrigation practices have left the riverbed completely dry for the last 15 years. Esfahan was the former capital of the Persian Empire. Nagashe Jahan Square lies at the heart of the city. Overlooking the square is the Shah Mosque. Its mighty Prussian blue domes and mind-bogglingly beautiful mosaic exterior have stood here for nearly 400 years. Gaia Bazaar lines the central plaza and is very much a working market. Goods are traded like carpets, clothes, spices and ceramics. Tea culture is big business here and Iranians have one of the highest per capita tea consumptions in the world. We stopped by one of Esfahan's most iconic tea houses, the Azedegan Cafe. It's tucked away through a tiny door at the back of an old junkyard and filled with an extraordinarily eclectic collection of objects and antiques. Javad introduced me to Melika Davudi, the founder of the RF Music Academy in Esfahan a school renowned for producing some of the finest tombak players in the country, including Javad. من ملیکا داوودی هستم، متولد تهران و همسرم و در اصفهان زندگی میکنم. از موقعی که با همسرم ازدواج کردم، همسر من جعفر قاضی اسکر هست که نوازنده تنبک هست. و نوازندگی تنبک رو از 13 سالگی شروع کرده و تا الان که 33 سالش هست 20 ساله که داره تنبک نوازی میکنه Whilst Shafar was performing in Tehran during our visit Melika, who manages the school was able to tell us the history of the institution's rapid growth خب شوهر من 4 ساله که این آموزشگاه رو تأسیس کرده به خاطر اینکه از نحوه آموزش موسیقی در ایران خودش تصمیم میگیره که یه آموزشگاهی با کیفیت خوبی رو بتونه تأسیس بکنه که خدا رو شکل هم دلار تأسیس کرد و اوکی بود تعالی و خیلی اون چیزی که من میبینم تو ایشون همیشه هست و داره تلاش میکنه اینه که به همه اون انگیزه نوازندگی رو بده و این شور و حال رو درشون نگه داره در حدی که الان هنرجای تنبک ما از چهار سال هستن به بالا اسم من گلال هست چرا 
باهاش بخونه، تصریف خانی بکنه و یک نوازنده خوبی تو سن خودش باشه. و خیلی به بچه ها انگیزه میده از بابت اینکه میتونن توی جشواره ها شرکت بکنن، بتونن جلوی چندین نفر بزنن، خجالت نکشن. As a teacher myself, it's inspiring to see such a comprehensive and effective method of teaching at the institute, which is clearly having a huge impact on the next generation of Tombak players. ما سایزای متوسط بزرگ کوچیک داریم و موقعی که به یک مرتبه خوبی تو ساز تنبک میرسن پیشنهاد شروع یک ساز ملودیکا حتما برای همشون دارن چون احساس میکنن که بسیار بسیار تو این زمینه توی هم نوازی کردنشون تو درک و دریافت موسیقیشون تو درک بهتر ریتم و موسیقی خیلی کمکشون میکنن به خاطر اینکه اصلا سن برای ما مهم نیست اون چیزی که برای ما مهمه کیفیته حتی منصور که ده سالش هست بعضی وقتا که آقای قاضی اسکر نمیاد جای آقای قاضی اسکر درس میده خدا رو شکر توی این چهار سالی که ما آموزشگاه خودمون رو تأسیس کردیم تو این زمینه خب خیلی موفق تر بودیم به خاطر اینکه تمامی این مسائلی که بود تایمایی که باید به بچه ها میدادیم و به نظر من این خیلی 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 برای ما خوب و نه تنها برای ما و بلکه برای تمامی مردم شهر اصفهان فکر کنم خیلی مفید واقع شده و برای هنر این شهر و به خاطر همین هست و منصور که شما امروز دیدینش تو سه تا جشواره نفر اول ایران شد. صفحه داریم تو اینستاگرام که از هنرجوامون اول که استادامون رو معرفی کردیم و تو یه پیجی که مخصوص خود آموزشگاه هست استادامون رو معرفی کردیم تو همه ساز ها و یه پیجی جدا داریم که مربوط به فقط تنبک نوازامون هستش که فیلم از خود اساتید و هنرجاشون و تایمایی که دارن حتی به هنرجاشون درس میدن گذاشتیم که از نوع نحوه تدریسمون تمامی اون کسایی که دومال کننده ما هستن با خبر بشن و اطلاع پیدا بکنن همسر من جعفر استاد یعنی جواد اومد پیش جعفر کلاس تنبک بعد از اون خب جواد خیلی 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 هم با استعداد بود و هم پشکار خیلی خوبی داشت جواد به من میگه مادر و من اینو مثل پسرم خیلی دوستش دارم The academy is also an important space for the teachers, all of whom are professional players, to collaborate, rehearse and prepare for concerts.
We travelled south some 300 kilometres from Esfahan to the UNESCO-listed city of Yazd. It's positioned between Iran's two great deserts, the dasht de kavir to its north and the dasht e lut due south, and is thought to have been a stop-off city on the ancient silk and spice routes from the far east. Yazd feels like a city from another time. Its winding streets, unmodernised yellow mud-brick architecture and laid-back mid-century charm are a stark contrast to anywhere else we have seen in Iran. I've come to Yazd as it's considered to be the home place of Zurkana, a traditional practice of fitness training that dates back to Iran's pre-Islamic era and is accompanied by drumming. The all-male participants are expected to display integrity and good moral duty in addition to the strenuous routine of activities using giant, weighted wooden clubs. The translation of Zurkana is House of Strength, and it's thought that the tombak derived from the zarb drum that is used to accompany the participants. It's a similar shape to the tombak, but bigger and made with a ceramic shell. It is also heavier and tuned to a higher pitch too, so it can project over the chants and cheers of the participants, whilst luring them into a trance-like state of concentration. Entranced by the lure of the desert, we headed to a small oasis town on the southwestern edge of the Dasht de Kavir called Mezra. Quite knowing what to expect, we were delighted to find hundreds of kilometres of undulating desert to contemplate the region's fascinating geological history. Millions of years ago, a salt-rich ocean occupied this region. As the ocean dried up, it left behind a layer of salt as much as six to seven kilometres thick with average summer temperatures reaching 50 degrees Celsius, it's unsurprising these oceans evaporated to leave vast and sparsely populated plains. There are few plants or animals that can withstand the saline soils and scorching temperatures. Despite the inhospitable environment, people from all over Iran love to visit the Dasht de Kavir to find energy. And given that these deserts were once seas, we were told that walking in the salty sand exfoliates the skin and gives the dry air a particularly sweet taste. Nowadays, tourism is having an increasing effect on this tranquility, with high chassis 4x4s racing across the dunes, providing transport for intrepid travellers intoxicated by those evocative curves of the rolling sand dunes. Tourism and travel to the region is mainly during the winter months to avoid the extreme heat, though whilst daytime temperatures are pleasant, they drop well below freezing at night. The sun is setting here in the desert and on this journey into a once unfamiliar land. And what a journey it's been. In Iranian culture, it's customary to offer a parting gift to someone for their hospitality. So I was delighted to leave a token of my own culture, the Irish Bauron, in Iran with Javad and our new friends. 
Iran is a country of ancient tradition and exciting cultural treasures, and much more than what we see and read about in the press and online. It's a warm and welcoming country whose youthful population look ahead with hope for a future of possibilities. The tradition of tombak playing is in excellent hands, and as for the next generation of musicians drumming new life into this really ancient tradition, this is their time to be heard. <laughs> 